So, if you guys remember on the Howie episode, he asked us about it because he was like, I don't like seeing that the, this family is not talking to, get it, to each other. You want me to pull that and stamp, stamp up so people can see? Um, or should sure. we show what he sent first? The poker? No, wait. So I, in that conversation, I feel like for the first time, I put it out there that I'm maybe willing to open that door and, and like see what could happen. Because for me, it's always been closed. It was like, I need this distance between us and I cannot entertain this relationship. And I was dealing with a lot of frustration over it over the time. It's really annoying. I don't like it, but you know. Anyway, I was like, maybe I should think about it. And I was willing to put that out there to see what happens. And then what really hurt me to see then following after that is that what he chose to send to my mom was the clip of Ethan saying, what if your family member is an asshole? Mm. And how he said, that's fine. Then you just, you say, you know what? I love this fucking asshole. Something like that. That's what he said, which by the way, to me actually seemed like a really good point. I I thought it made a difference for me because that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. Like, yes, let's all just say it. You're an asshole. Let's <laughs> move on past that. But anyway, I thought it was a you good point. You love this asshole. There you go. It's a spectrum of assholeness. <laughs> I, either how, way. How wide of an asshole are we talking here? Mm. Either way, um, he chose from that to just take this moment and send it to my mom like, mm. Look at what they're doing. Look how they're talking about me. And then my mom went into a whole breakdown. Just <gasps> like the endless cycle that he keeps doing with my family. And when Ethan saw that, then Ethan came on the show because it was the same day of the show and he was upset. And then that led to the rant that you guys saw of Ethan. Mm -hmm. See, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to pause it because obviously. But listen, this is what I was trying to say. Moses isn't just going to his mom because they're besties and he's confiding. He's burdening his mom with drama that should be handled between the adult children. And this is what I'm speaking from my own experience because I have similar family dynamics. You don't go to our parents to bother the elders in the community when adults in the community are in conflict. It's inappropriate. Not everybody's best friends with their mom, guys. And even though I tell my mom a lot, you can't like you can't bring your parents involved. You can't make your mom cry over tension because her kids are fighting. If the kids are fighting, leave your mom out of it, okay? Otherwise, you will curse your family with lots of generational burdens, okay? So don't, don't make your mother cry and stress her out. When you are very much adult people, you can talk about it alone, okay? So if my sibling and I are in, our, are in conflict, I tell my parents, it's fine, we'll handle it, we're adults. If we need your wisdom as elders, we'll come to you. But otherwise, we're in our adult years. Why are we going to make our old parents deal with the burdens of what our drama over shit that's petty anyways, or that shit maybe that's not, but like they shouldn't be hurting our parents when like, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem to Moses. He's making his mother cry. You know, don't do that. And so it's just been endless and we're all so over it. And I feel like, I guess I can update you guys that some of you guys were worried that maybe we will reconcile and you'll see us reuniting so don't worry because it's clearly not gonna happen damn i mean it's, that's sad though it's sad when you have this kind of tension with siblings it is sad because you come from the same family you have a connection you're close it's like that's that's a what a burden what a horrible burden and i do think at the end of the day like that sucks like that really sucks it's um it's done it's not gonna happen and i got my answer because i put it out there and i was waiting to see which way the wind will go mm. and it went in a very direct way to shutting it all off and that's the end of it let me show the cl original clip mm. and then what he sent because I, I want you guys to see what a snake he is because anyone who's left defending him you know what moses probably is he's probably super mentally ill needs really deep therapy right and I think that's the problem is that ultimately when we have these family dynamics, look, like I always joke, the worst part about me is maybe like family drama. I have people in my family who have problems like this and it's really difficult to deal with. It's difficult to deal with anyone who's close to you and other people who, who twists everything you say, who has deep childhood trauma and they won't go to therapy, who wants to blame everybody for their problems. It is an incredible burden 
but you still love those people, that doesn't mean you're not open with boundaries. I am open, but with boundaries, okay? Ela should be open with boundaries, but she's also allowed to say that Moses isn't someone she wants to be open with. That's such a valid perspective on a person who's just like not making better decisions to bring harmony. If we're adults and we're truly good people, then we should get over it. Whatever it is, get over it. But my feeling is that Moses is in his out of sync era. He's like, he's struggling in a vortex of like negativity or something because genuinely like, you you know what I mean? And I talk to my siblings about this as somebody who has aunties and uncles who don't talk to each other. My siblings and I always say, hey, you want to be siblings that don't talk to each other? Or are we going to work through this bullshit? And yes, sometimes the siblings go no talking with each other because it's too much. And it usually is because the sibling won't face themselves. Guaranteed, every time my siblings and I have had conflict, it's because somebody's not facing themselves. Once they face themselves, boom, we're best friends again. So I tell you this right now as an older sister, as somebody that has seen my siblings, 10 of us have problems in and out of life. Every time we cured it, every time we bonded, every time we got back together crying and happy, one of us had to face our ego. One of us had to be humbled. One of us had to put our Middle Eastern pride in a corner and send it on its own way, okay? And I'm telling you this right now, if you're genuinely good and you genuinely love each other, you will face your ego, you will break it down so you could go and have family get togethers again. Because unless one of you is truly a horrific person, what are you fighting about? And then of course, if you genuinely just don't want to be friends, that's also valid. Which I know there are some people in the Trisha fandom who are, let me just show you what a snake this dude is. I did. I watched the poker thing and then I saw Tana mm. trying to By the to way, it's like every time someone asks me about them, you can't send it to like and say they won't stop talking about me. That's the other problem as a public figure. And that's, by the way, do you know when my bridge burned? People would say, why are you talking about it? You shouldn't talk about it. It's like, are they always allowed to talk about you, but you're never allowed to talk about yourself? Or what if somebody brings it up? People bring up shit. Look at Tati. Is she never supposed to go out and talk about James Charles again? Like, yes, there's a healthy way to bring stuff up. And then there's like, there's way, Moses and Ethan and Ela, it's not settled. Okay, it's not settled yet. So it's gonna come up. You guys act like in your real life when people ask you in about your drama that it doesn't feel like, holy shit, how am I supposed to answer this? Everyone can answer it in the way that makes sense to them, right? Like, we do a live show, so I, I can't be like, bleh, 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 bleh. you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm gonna answer it. So I'm an upfront guy. And I've explained that. And I'm that. sure people ask them all the fucking time. I've explained that to them. And they're this open and vulnerable because there is nothing to hide. And that's what I love about them. Like Moses and Trisha are the ones that are definitely hiding something. And it sounds like Ela and Ethan know something, but they know like they'd rather them solve it in private. So like, I do believe them. I explained it to everybody. And so the fact that after this, which to me was opening the door after this, he I was still chose to do that. That was just like, honestly, mm -hmm. a slap in the face. I don't know how to call it. I but was amazed, it was just, by the way, I have to mm -hmm. say when the door said, is shut close. When you had said you would consider it, I was like, well, what? Did I, I honestly it? don't even, I, as I was saying it, I wasn't even sure if I'm really ready for it, but it's just, it's been exhausting. And so I was like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I need to reconsider everything. I don't know. So I honestly don't clip, know, but first of all, and it's I know now totality. Get you to do frenemies again. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. And then that's why when and maybe you don't want me to bring it up. You, you can talk about it. Uh, that's why you asked us. That's why I asked. I said not only um, hopefully there's a frenemies uh, reboot, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm very concerned that you don't talk to your brother. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> as as Jew I love how important it is to Moses that or to Howie that you and your brother talk. We can't hate each other. The world is hating us as it is. True. We, we got to keep it tight. Oh my God. Back so fast on the Haga and Nagila. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Even Howie was taken aback. We got to keep it like tight. Falafel in here. Also, one thing I've learned about my life as a career person on YouTube, all of this will always be a part of their career. It will always come up. It will always come up forever. In the same way that my bridge burning will always come up or issues I've had with anyone else, because that is a part of your story. So like there won't be a time when Ethan and Ela ever stop talking about this because there will never be a time on the internet when frenemies didn't happen. Frenemies happened and we were all here to witness it. And therefore it will be brought up until he is 80 years old. An interviewer will say, can we talk about your time on frenemies? Guys, he was an icon. Trisha was an icon. They had an iconic moment on the internet.
This is the burden of being a content creator, but it is also the blessing. This was an iconic moment and I'm so glad to have been here for it. And it will always be brought up in any, every interview for the rest of their life. But uh, <laughs> so, so, but I don't know if I'm overstepping my bounds. No, you're not. And, and, and exactly. Taylor says, I think that's why Ethan is so pissed. Like he can't stop talking about it. Frenemies happened. Exactly. He even said that. He's like, why are you guys pretending like this didn't happen? It happened. It was real. And I believe Ethan and Ela are like willing to have the conversation, even if they're like, you know, very strong with their values. But I, I do think like, they're like, let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. And we could see that because of the way the frenemies went, truly, right? Trisha and Moses were very inappropriate during that time. And Trisha was having Ethan do a lot of emotional labor for her. And I love Trisha and everything. But ultimately, I think obviously the healthier people in this scenario are Ela and Ethan, right? And telling, I just think that, hey, li listen, you don't have to be best friends, but you should not have animosity or any negativity <laughs> Toward a, uh, a family member, you can just. And I never thought that I would be in a situation like that. But you were are. right. Um, so can I do anything? Normally, to fix it? normally I would shut this down completely and immediately. But I feel like it keeps coming up. <laughs> like, and every time people see us, that's the first thing they ask. So mm. doesn't your mother say it to you? Well, you, my mom, obviously, endlessly. Yeah. obviously. Your well, I'm just telling you as a parent, but, I have three children and grandchildren. Yeah. If She's two of my too, kids, if two of I know, my and kids being were a parent, not talking, it would break my heart. Right, and that's so what my mom tells me. being a lot older than you, I just don't want you to, I just, yeah. and I don't even know him. 69. Know so maybe, um. What? 69 or 68. 69. Oh, my age. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll be 69 this year, but I'm 68 right now as we're speaking. This is live, right? <laughs> yes. But as if you're watching this like so, eight months from now, uh -huh. I'm now 69. To those. I want to do fresh things those for people who repeat when you're that old. You know, sometimes you also have to do let it go and write its wave. Because I will say as somebody who's like, uh, there's always a sibling that isn't talking to the family or vice versa or like I'm not talking to a sibling because we have disagreements. We're adults. We have very different beliefs. And sometimes my parents will be like, hey, are you guys talking? And I'll be like, uh, we're like in a moment right now, but we'll be fine. Or like, hey, you know, we'll talk when it's time again. Because one, I'm always open to talking to my siblings or inner circle. I do not block my inner circle. I do not block my siblings. But, you know, when we have a awkward moment and one of us has to be like, hey, I'm kind of worried about some of the things you're doing. Like we've had interventions before. We've had conversations. We've had just like, hey, as a family, we're just kind of worried about you. And you know, that doesn't always feel good to people. So sometimes people go no contact for a while because even when you're trying to help, you know, so I always say like, be careful about pushing the agenda, like how he's trying to do where he's like, you should fix it. You should fix it if it's reasonable to fix it. Right? So is Howie overstepping? Chat says, great question. I think so. I'm going to say Howie Mandel is in this moment overstepping. But to be fair, I think Ela wants to talk about it. So he's giving her a space to do that. But I think he's 5% overstepping. Well, it's got to hurt bad at that age when you when that number ticks over to the next 69. one. It, like physically hurt? No, just emotionally because you're like, fuck, I'm going to die like pretty soon. I, I feel that every day. <laughs> Come on. I feel man. like I don't, Are you I'm just trying to make it through. Very afraid of death. I'm just trying wow. to uh, mental <laughs> health issues. Like a cat. <laughs> you leave, but. <laughs> but think of that. Click. Okay, so I wanted think to say something, thumbnail. you guys. I wanted to say something. Whenever you bring it up, for some reason, yeah. it hits me differently. Maybe it's like a father figure speaking to me. Mm. I don't know. But maybe I'm open to thinking about something to do about it. I hope situation. you are. Okay, that's nice. And Elis saying she's comfortable with him talking about it. Only 5% because this is public. I think if it was private, private, it'd be fine. Yeah, basically that. But I think Ethan and Neil are very comfortable having conversations like this on stream, to be fair. Um, and in some ways, it's so weird. It does involve the internet, but it doesn't. But it is one of those things that it just happened on the internet. So if this was private, we never would have known about it. The fact that we even know about it is because it happened on the internet. Just a reminder, we also can't forget as an audience that there's drama because it, we saw it happen. We saw it happen. Like... As much as they're like, hey, this is a private family matter. Yeah, but this private family matter happened live on the internet. And we were here to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, we also can't forget that it happened, you know? That's why I say to YouTubers, if you really have an issue with someone, try to talk to them in private first and then take it to the internet. But if the, the it's just a, you know, again, if you're making friends with a Trump voter, you can't be mad if they get on their YouTube channel and they talk about pro-Trump bullshit. What are you gonna do? Like talk to them in private about it? No, you can talk to them in public. But I think like, 
I think in this situation, it's just it's kind of the this bubble, right? And I'm not saying it because Broke I want to bring up something that's yes. controversial. <laughs> I'm open just, to a situation where it's guided by you. Oh, from day one. oh, Ela's open to Howie doing a mediation. I'll do it from day so one. For me, this when was, the we're both, oh, yeah, this was Whoa. really a lot for me. And um, I was kind of like anxiously waiting to see what will happen, what will follow it. If you really wanted to put the family together, there was a chance here for sure. Oh, so I'm gonna but, get to the point real fast of what he said. Oh, involved in it. Ethan. We need but an were, outsider. When I first met you, I met you in, in Malibu. Details, I started talking well, about he'll it. Have to and people got himself. mad at me. Your audience got mad at me because I said to Ethan, "You don't talk to your sister-in-law, and they, the, the, and you don't talk to your family." Mm -hmm. The part where you, where he says the but part, yeah, because yeah, you should click on the other one. Okay, so I their audio is so much lower than his audio. It's actually pissing me off. Zach, get your shit together. Anyway, we we had a long conversation, it, and we go on yeah. and off topic. So. Okay, okay, yeah. So anyway, just to give you ideas of the 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 tenor, the the tone of the conversation there. So from that, um, which is mostly how we saying get back together, and Eve being like, you know what, I'm actually open to it for the first time ever. Um, here's the TikTok that Moses sent his mom. People go, oh, he's just he, he has a right to confide in his mom. Is that what yeah, he's doing? Yeah, this is not confiding. This is manipulating. This is the clip he sends her. That mm -hmm. is family. What you if your family member is just a giant fucking asshole? You could say that, but I, I love this giant fucking asshole that happens to be my brother. Uh, Howie. Wow. This is what he heard. So he goes, they're obsessed. He called me a fucking asshole. Can you believe that? Yeah. And so. What? You're such a pussy, Moses. Oh my God, you've never called your sibling an asshole before? Yo, my family would tear him a new asshole. What do you mean you never looked at your sibling like you're being such a dick right now, bro? The worst thing your, your person called you was an asshole? Holy fuck. Jesus. What a pussy, bro. What a fucking pussy. Men are such pussies, bro. Not all men, just these men. This category of man cries to his mom and goes, he called me an asshole. What, you pussy, bro? Jesus. The, that's what you sent your mother. Leave your mother out of this, for fuck's sake. Oh, this little fucking rat tried to spin it, but, like, actually... It was when in... Bro, if my brother was like, Brittany's being an asshole, I was like, well, maybe, you know, you deserved it, <laughs> you know? Like... What? You're mad over somebody being an asshole? What? Stop. Caitlin says, bro, you got to stop being funny or being hilarious while I'm lifting. Bro, don't die lifting at the gym right now, bro. That is so funny. Let's see. Maiden says I can't be on Ela's side either, though, because this just seems like making money off family drama. It's messy, even if they are more healthy. Um, I don't think so. I think I, I disagree with you, but I respect the position. I don't think so. I think... I think this feels very different to me personally, but that's because I have a very high probability of having something similar happen to me one day where like, as somebody who knows what it's like to have like a very, but I'm sure, I mean, everyone has a, a story as content creators who make content with people, it does have to happen on the internet because in order for it to happen behind closed doors, well, even if it happened behind closed doors, it would happen on the internet. Do you get what I'm saying? Like it's too late. It's already on the internet. Just like with Tati and James and everybody else, it can no longer ever happen off the internet. Some of the conversations happen off the internet, but the truth is, is like Moses already made himself a public figure. So now it happens on the internet because that's how YouTube works. So it's like the bubble has a healthy way of interacting with public conversation that I think could be possible. I don't think Moses is healthy enough or interested in doing it. But I do agree that some of the conversation will happen in private. But ultimately, this shit happened in public. So I think I think Moses, this is my opinion, and I think this is probably true. I think Moses doesn't want to have the conversation because he will not win or come out looking good. And he's not willing to face himself enough to have the real conversation. That's what I think is happening. Because I think this would be the most healing conversation on the internet if we could have a part of it happen on the internet, but you have to be healed enough to have it. 
And I don't think he's going to do that because I just don't think he's healed enough to have it. And and Ethan and Trisha – or Ethan and Trisha. Ethan and Ela are protecting themselves. And then Trisha is, of course, defending Moses. That's my opinion. But I could be wrong, of course. And I appreciate any pushback, of course. I just think that that's what I'm seeing because – as a content creator myself, there are conversations that I think would be really healing to have on the internet with people I've disagreed with. But of course, we'd have to have some conversation in private to make sure that we're on the same page, but to make sure it's real healing, which wouldn't be a problem if it was real healing. If it was real healing, you would have the conversation both on and off the internet, in my opinion. Taken in totalitarian, in totality, such an fat fucking obvious little bitch made move. Sorry, but it is. So... There is the final update on the saga. It is the end. It is the end. <coughs> um, I feel like this time I... It was so clear. It was like as clear as daylight. And you know what? This was an interesting thing I too. said it. I, I put in the, the opening for it. And he chose to focus on the asshole. Yeah. He chose to focus on that and send that. To Have you ever been in an argument with someone? You're like, okay. I'm ready to like squash the beef. I love you. Let's move forward. They're like, but you called me an asshole. Okay. We're talking about the whole legacy of our whole family together. Do you really give a fuck that I called you an asshole? Yes. I think it was very rude. I think you should apologize for calling me an asshole. And it's like, we're trying to heal generational trauma. Calling you an asshole shouldn't matter. We should be laughing about it. Be like, bro, I'm sorry. I freaked out. You called me an asshole, bro. Sorry. I called you an asshole. Nah, it's good, bro. It's good, bro. You know what I mean? But instead it's, I actually want you to apologize for calling me an asshole. Then we're not healed. The healing should be, sorry, I freaked out. You called me an asshole. Sorry, I called you an asshole. But I have a feeling Moses is still upset about the asshole. We're talking about your children hanging out. We're talking about Christmas or whatever Jews do. We're talking about, we're talking about literally the future generations of our of our lineage and you're going to hold the grudge over asshole to let go of the grudge means holding on to the details and making sure we're on the same page in terms of values in my opinion okay in my opinion to my mom and to me that says everything i needed to know and the, the reason it. that i like that i'm talking about it publicly like this is because he does all this to try to control me and I want to talk directly to him and say you will never fucking decide what I can and cannot do no mm -hmm. that's no it. power over me and I owe no I think Moses is playing a power game he's trying to be like see how Ethan and Ela talk about me I think he's playing a power game to silence them I do I think a lot of people have tried that on me too and I'm like just to be clear you will not tell me what to do right but to be clear I also know you're doing it so I don't hold you accountable that's why people won't talk to me because they know I'm going to ask them the questions they cannot answer. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And I think that's what Moses is doing. I'm telling you right now, that's the categorization. And I think I'm fucking right. Because if it was different, it'd be different. But I'm telling you, it's the same situation. It's the type of person that does not want to be asked the questions, especially in front of an audience, because they don't have the right answer. They, have, they, they haven't healed. They are grudging. They are unhealthy. And there's something. Okay? There's something. I think, I think so. I really do. I could be wrong, but I think I would put money on it. What if the problem is that someone can't apologize for coming, calling someone an asshole? Okay. Again, I mean this with the most loving care. Who are you calling an asshole and why do you need an apology? Because I'll be real with you. Like, do you guys just not use the word asshole as like a language in your everyday life? Like you're being an asshole. Like, is that the, not the most casual language ever? Like, that's just saying you're being a dick. Like, why would you ever apologize for calling someone an asshole except, like, to say that, hey, like, I think you were being kind of a dick, but it's no big deal. Like, it's the most casual language in the world. So, like, unless you mean it with, like, the most malice, but Ethan didn't even say it with malice. He was just like, he's a big asshole. He's an asshole. Yeah, you are being an asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, says I prefer prick. There you go. Prick, you're being an asshole. You're being a prick. Hey, why are you being such a dick, bro? Why are you being an asshole? Why are you being rude? Like, why are you being, you know what I'm saying? Like, Moses is going to cause a bitch fit over being called, like, a prick? Jesus. Jesus Christ. No, I don't owe anybody anything. 
You know what I'm saying? Same for me. I've been avoiding talking about it, trying to keep so it stop, as, bro. as, you know, whatever it is. I don't even know what the word, but I've been trying and I'm just done. Exactly. Exactly. Alice says, if you want an apology because you want to win, then you're being petty. But if you want an apology because you're genuinely hurt, that's different. If you're genuinely hurt, I'm sorry. If you want an apology to say, see, I made Brittany apologize or I made my friend apologize, that's weird. Right? Yes, Alice says Moses obviously wants an apology for power in this situation. Just put yourself in their shoes. Just embody their lived experience right now. And you have your sibling or grown-up friend of yours. I mean, guys, I've literally had grown-ups in my life say, I don't like your content. It's offensive to me. Okay, don't watch it. And they're like, what? And I'm like, don't watch it. I've had literally grown-ups be like, are you racist against white men? And I'm like, what? And they're like, I don't know. I just feel like you don't like white men. And I'm like, oh, get the fuck off my channel. If you literally, what do you, go to therapy. And you want me to expect, what am I supposed to do in that situation? Apologize to white men for, for their feelings getting hurt? Because I talked about the patriarchy and like oppression. Like, come on, be serious about the context of the conversation. I'm obviously not racist against white men. But if grown up adults are getting their feelings hurt because you have a, an opinion and they can't handle it. Come on, bros. Come the fuck on. Please grow up. But also they have trauma. Go to therapy. Moses has trauma. Moses can't handle being called out in any situation. He can't. He can't handle it. He's never handled it well. He's always had problems. He's always the victim. Like that's Moses' story. Now, if he wants to be a different person, he can. And I'm just giving examples because, again, you have to embody this experience. You have to put yourself in their shoes. And remember that everybody is very old in this situation. And there are people who are openly talking about opening the conversation. And then Trisha and Moses are acting like they don't exist. Okay, I would find it strange if someone refuses to apologize for name calling. Okay, guys, please. Name calling is not real when you're an adult. Like... It's only real if you're insulting a person on purpose. Descriptive, okay. Tim Pool calling a woman a hooker is meant to demoralize her. I wouldn't say apologize for calling her a hooker. I would say, are you biased against sex workers? And do you think calling her a hooker is demoralizing? And are you gonna change your language to accept the fact that she's just different from you? And if he's like, no, then I'm like, okay, that's your bias. We're not working with this person. Okay, if you're an adult and you call somebody an asshole, are you seeing an opinion of observation or do you actually think you can call a grown up a, like a name? Like, what does that mean? Like, it's silly, but like you don't ask a grown adult to apologize. Like you want either you think they shouldn't have done it in the first place or the language isn't that bad because like I don't like I need the context here of what you think Ethan should apologize for if the context of the situation is. But what if your family is an asshole, which is an observation and an accurate description of the situation? Why would he apologize for calling him an asshole? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, unless he doesn't believe it, then you apologize. If you call people names, but you don't believe it, that's different. But then you can't double down and pretend you believe it because you want to win the argument. So like, I need, I need some sort of like example here of like, aren't you ever talking to your friends and you're like, oh my God, you're so stupid. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, don't you ever talk to your friends? You're like, oh my God, that's so dumb. Stop. Oh my God. <laughs> Or is that name calling? Like, obviously context matters, right? But again, a real apology has to come from a real place. I do not ask people to apologize. I only ask people why they use that word and how they feel about it and how can I have a relationship with it, right? Let's see, I don't think anyone uses the word asshole to accurately or objectively describe situations, to be honest. Or to be frank, there are better ways of saying someone is acting unreasonably. It feels a little bit like you're my mom and you're saying like you should never flip off your sibling. One time I flipped off one of my siblings because we like joke around and my mom got so offended. She goes, how dare you flip off one of your siblings? Are you that kind of a person? Like, I'm not sure if you're that kind of a person. We're like, you must know. It's just like, it's a fun way to gesture with your friends. But if you're my mother, it's like always inappropriate to flip somebody off. Like, are you that person? Are we just having a difference of bubble expectation? You know what I mean? I'm not sure what's happening because like a part of me is like, they're not calling each other names like that aren't real. They're observing the situation. Like if you're saying like, oh, they could have more decorum. You know what I mean? They could be better with their language. Like, yeah, sure. And like, I could stop saying fuck, but I'm not gonna. 
you're describing a situation where nobody is hurt. The context is somebody feels hurt. Somebody feels hurt because they were called out and held accountable. It's like debate bro getting mad that I called him a bad at relationships and he denies he's bad at relationships, but he's a serial cheater. What do you mean you're not bad at relationships? You're literally known for being bad at relationships. Like you can't be mad at me for stating a fact. Like that's what it sounds like. It sounds like Moses is mad that a fact was stated. You can't be mad a fact was stated. You're being an asshole. But also like maybe you have to be an asshole sometimes, I guess, you know? I don't know. I feel like a little bit like it doesn't matter if your feelings are hurt because it could just be it only matters if your feelings are hurt if it was wrong. But like rapists should have their feelings hurt if somebody calls them a degenerate. You know what I'm saying? Moses earned the title of asshole. I don't care if his feelings are hurt if he's not going to own the fact that he was an asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. You know, what's funny, too, is like, we don't police everything they put out. I don't care if they say anything about me. Like, imagine if every time they said something mean about us, I would send it to your mom. I'd be like, hey, you got to do crazy. something about this. It's absolutely crazy. And he knows how hard it hits her every time. Yep. That's why he does. It. And he still does it. There are always people in your family who do this. They rope old people into the mix and they try to torture the old people in the family to make them feel bad. To like tort, they do it to punish the younger. Moses is doing it to punish Ethan and Ela. He's using his mom to hurt Ela. That's literally I've seen this happen in family dynamics, and it's disgusting. So anyway, I, this just came up all of a sudden. I was like, oh well, here, look at this. They they were talking about us, and like I don't care. I didn't I didn't even notice. I don't care. I wasn't thinking of sending you. And so like I'm not fucking obsessed with it the same way. It's easy for him to be like. They will never stop talking about me, but I'm not, I don't have a list of, but like, like this. Okay. This maiden, you just said it in chat. Perfect. Reactive abuse is when you push someone past their breaking point and then shame them for reacting negatively to it and then move the goalposts for their reaction. That's what I feel like Moses is doing to everybody. It feels like Moses is making everyone crazy. And then he's like, see how crazy they are. And it's like, fuck. And you can't do anything about it. And as somebody who has somebody like this in my life, I will tell you this. The best thing to do is open with boundaries. I love you. Distance. Because every time that person comes in to the mix, everything gets ruined again because they just like they go around because of their trauma. It's a big deal. OK, but then that's why, like when we have conversations about whether or not people should come back into our lives, it has to be like if they've gotten help and if they've changed. Yes. But every time they come into our life, it's like, uh oh, like they do. They cause rumors. They go to the old people. They twist narratives. They call everybody like. They'll go around threatening to call the cops on everybody. Like, they'll ruin. So I'm saying with peace and love, when you've got somebody like that in your life, you have to be very careful because I want them to get help. I want them to be redeemed. I want them to be loved. But they will also stab you as they're crying about being the victim. So be very careful. They will literally, as they stab you, cry and say, oh, my God, I'm so hurting. I wish you would pay attention to my feelings. They're sick. And it's very sad for everybody involved. Because they probably don't know what they're doing. But also there's a part of them that definitely knows what they're doing. So be very careful. Look at this. This is just from a few weeks ago. I sent you something like a screenshot and you're like, oh my God, this is like the Avengers from hell. And you're oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is after our first poker event. Oh, here, let me show the very beginning. We're even going to mention it or not, but I loved your, ca I like oh. shared it with Moses, the text he sent me where I sent you something like a screenshot and you're like, oh my God, this is like the Avengers from hell. And you're oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <"Cutters are simple." laughs> I'm like, like, you can knock it. Wait, wasn't half of Trisha's friends at the table, like Tana and stuff? More dubious <laughs> group of people. I was like, this is a lot. Shut up. You don't even yeah, know me. Laugh harder, Moses. <laughs> Also, well, who the fuck is that? I mean, that's kind of funny though, but also it doesn't make sense because isn't e like Trisha literally... Tana was there. Trisha's friends with Tana, right? I'm confused. I'm confused. That guy, shut up, dork. I have no idea. Oh. so good. I knew, I was like, sometimes I was like, I know we don't text each other a lot. We have them this week, but usually we don't text each other a lot. But I was like, I have to text them this because like, what? And then you cracked me up. Like, it was crazy. It was, yeah. yeah. It was like someone had to literally like plan <laughs> to have like a group of like just dubious people. The worst of the worst. So I was like, it was wild. Bro, uh... I am so confused by this statement. Are she fighting with Tana again? And present company in this podcast studio? How do we gauge that as a group of people? Uh, 
terms of dubiousness, whatever the fuck that is. That's all I can say. That's that on that. <laughs> how, how did that even happen? Uh, no. Wait, they weren't even talking about them? Maybe I'm wrong? I mean, I don't know. This is Spill Some Tea With Me on TikTok. Trisha throws shade at the poker tournament that happened this weekend with Ethan. I mean, I'm assuming H3 would have done the research to make sure, but I don't know. Yeah. Dumb fucking face, bro. Okay, sorry. I won't get too caught yeah. up. All right. I mean, can I just show it and not say anything? Yes. Okay. Just oh, so. I'm being told that's his actual. That's his actual. How did that even so happen? <laughs> that's it. Just submitted without mm. commentary. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Thank you. Is, uh, no. Everything was like a fever dream these days. I'm like, what? I know. It's actually so weird. Too, which I'm like, this sounds like, again, a You know what's so funny, though? It doesn't matter, but like, Trisha literally has like all these canceled people on her podcast all the time. Like, she had Leo Skeppy. She literally had Tana. She had Brooke. So it's like kind of funny. Like, it doesn't matter, guys. Everyone is a degenerate on the internet. At the end of the day, like, that's just like the truth of it. So it's kind of funny to act like, Oh, like I can't believe this group. Like this is so silly. This is this is silly, and this doesn't matter. There's no reason to hold a grudge over it. It's just silly to take some moral high ground when your podcast literally features like some of the worst people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and again, oh just say what you fucking want to say. Like, yeah, just. Does. But also, people on our journey, and everyone's like horrible, and everyone's moving forward, and everyone's figuring it out. Don't yeah. be a coward. Like, oh, you're better. Just Shut say up. it. Um, which is worse, the event we talked about before, the like the the Avengers, the what do you call them? Avengers from Hell. Avengers from Hell, or this group? Like, what would they be called? Oh, just say League of Villains, bro. Avengers from Hell. Don't you know anything about superheroes? <laughs> Idiot. Cringe. Girl. <laughs> Avengers Silly. from Hell, the original. <laughs> uh, which one is worse? Which one is the worst group? This is just silly. This is all silly, but. It doesn't matter. I hope like they don't make this a big deal. I hope they get over it. But the I think this one has like real like crimes allegedly. I, is, right? the is it the Hell sequel or the prequel? Yeah, the That's sequel or the true. prequel. Um, this because you know, this one is the original, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, the original. Yeah. But the the sequel definitely has like one of the lot, tape table yeah, was a little bit yeah, criminal. Yeah, true. Okay, whatever, they, whatever. I, you know, whatever. So. I'm like, okay, well, they do this too, and I don't fucking like pay attention or care or send it. Uh oh. All these Trisha stands have been riding me. All these people have been riding me, being like, look how he treats his, disrespects his crew. Oh, so silly. Oh my gosh, stop. You want to see what actual crew disrespect <clears throat> looks like? Let's take a walk through memory lane. Oh no. Of a conversation. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, we know what's about to happen. We know if we were around for frenemies, you know what's about to happen. I had with Trisha mm -hmm. a private conversation that she posted. She posted this fucking conversation online. I was never going to make this public. She goes, regarding tomorrow, I think let's, no, this, that's what I said. Regarding tomorrow, let's take the time off. The crew's kind of upset about how things played out. And I don't blame them. You trash them kind of badly. They work really hard on the show. I believe this is off the tail of when Sam put together the. What was it like? A man, how long ago is this? Advice segment. Now? Yeah, it was like a question segment. Was it like four years ago? This is what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> Why do you? Who needs scripted reality TV when you can just watch YouTube unfold right in front of you? This is real life happening right in front of us. Like this is real. Like this isn't for views. Like that's what I mean. It is okay. Lots of people do things for views in public. But this, I don't think Ethan is neurotypical enough to understand. Like, I think he's in it. I think they're genuinely authentic in a way that, like, Tana and, like, whatever, like, it's not. You know what I mean? It just feels like it's so for views when Tana fights with people and stuff. Like, she's thinking about money. Ethan is thinking about values. That's why it's more authentic because Ethan is taking like a principled stance and he's willing to open the conversation. Ethan isn't the one saying, I don't want to talk about it. He's saying, fine, let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It feels like he's coming from values, which is more authentic, but that's just my perspective. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say True. Three months from now, someone is going to make a video essay about this. Oof. Oof. I love YouTube. I love the ecosystem of YouTube. They, unfortunately... 
and she's like, this is fucking terrible. Like, whoever put this, in, I don't remember if she was specifically like, whoever put this together was an idiot, but she trashed it. And Sam felt terrible. And it was like her first week of work, too. Um, and she said, dude, let's just end this right now, for real. It's okay, for real. It's better if I'm not part of it. I don't vibe with them. I didn't ask them to be involved. They've all been nasty as hell to me. AP, AB downplaying my shit. Dan calling me an idiot before I came on. Fuck you, AB. I said, they have not been nasty to you, Trisha. That's ridiculous. Which is true. We've all been so, we were all so gracious and, and welcoming and nice. I'm sorry, pause. Discord said every time we look into long running drama like this, I have a moment where I'm like, wow, this is someone's life. It really has me evaluating how I'm spending my time. This is someone's real life. I love witnessing human history. We are witnessing internet like, this is why live streams are so amazing, though, because people get to witness it happening in real time, and they can say, I was there. They can be like, I was there. I remember. You know? We're all just, like, living history, and we're all just, like, stands in the crowd, <laughs> cheering for our gladiators. Nice. Ethan, I'm done. Uh, you said their work is trash. I didn't, but if I'm being honest, it is. Sam, for example, made the entire question advice segment. Like, I know this is going to sound so stupid, but they are our icons. Like, not everybody's icons, but in the bubbles. Like, you know when you go back and watch documentaries about Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn Monroe is just somebody's fucking sister. She's just somebody's daughter. But she's like this icon. Princess Di, all these people. That's what this is. You know what I mean? We're all just watching whoever their celebrity is, like, or whoever their person in history is. This is it. And when you have kids, they'll be like, mom, do you know who Trisha Paytas was? I just learned about her in fashion school and like or internet history class. And they're like, oh, yeah, I used to watch her live. <gasps> you watch Trisha live? Yeah, I even went to an H3H3 show. <gasps> it's like your mom saying she went to a Beatles concert. I'm dying. Spent a lot of time going through questions. AB didn't do proper research, she said. <laughs> and you were like, this is horrible and stupid idea. He summarized my video wrong. You didn't ask me. I read the comments now. Try to find employees who are all perfect all the time. It doesn't exist. And there's things you tell me are dumb. What? That is why I don't want Sam there. She's going to be too sensitive. I didn't know. So she's saying their work is trash. And she demands mm. Sam is never on set with her. Oh, my God. But I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, this is fucking gross. Silly. Disgusting, but Trisha was in the height and, of her mental you know, health. Okay. So obviously Trisha's wrong. Sam's a perfectly decent person, but I can see that if Trisha's in the height of her mental health issues, why she would feel like that. Like she's targeted somebody as like the enemy. She's not comfortable around them. But ultimately, I think like Sam is a fine person to ask Sam not to be on set with Trisha is like Trisha's in the wrong. Moses is in the wrong. Like in a situation of conflict, there is a right or wrong or there's two wrongs or there's two rights or there's like a compromise that has to be made. Trisha and Moses have been on the side of wrong for most of the issues, if not all of them, like 99% of them, in my opinion. I just want to say, I want to put it out there. Y'all want to fucking criticize me for being a uh, Trisha stands. Then let's relitigate. Also, if anybody wonders if I had tried to say that directly to Moses about this whole thing of going to our mom, I did. We talked like the last time, which was kind of recent because when he sent my mom something else out of context, I finally called him after a long time, just yelled at him. So I hung up because that wasn't going well. But then we chatted for like an hour after that. And the whole conversation of me and him talking was just stopped involving our mom mm -hmm. in this internet drama that she does not understand and doesn't need to understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he still did not take that information and do anything with it. So I'm just... I guess I have to say things publicly, you know, mm. for yep. him to understand it. <laughs> also, a little special mention to this little rat, Adam McIntyre. Oh! <gasps> this He's young. Adam's a child. Leave him. He's a kid. He's a kid. He's a kid. He doesn't know better. And he's obviously, like, a clout-driven kid as well. Like, no offense. Obviously, he's a victim of Colleen. But he's also, like, clout-driven, which is very young of him. But no offense, like, Trisha's podcast is doing great, but it will never be frenemies. Like, with peace and love, Trisha's greatest time on the internet has come and gone. There is no way she does better than frenemies. And if she does, that's beautiful, but I just doubt it. It would be much later in her life. Like, I just, I couldn't imagine it.
And maybe that's because I can't watch Trisha's podcast personally. Like I watched every Frenemies, but I can't get through a Trisha podcast because I'm like, it just doesn't have the thing. It has a good thing. It's great. It's very good. But I, the Ethan part of it, just like friend, just like Hassan, just like Leftovers, Ethan is the thing. That's why his stream is one of the top podcasts. Ethan brings in 46,000 people watching because Ethan has the thing. Ethan is the star. I don't know why anyone doubts that Ethan is the star. Ethan has been the star since day one. Okay. Ela is the fashion genius. Ethan is the entertainment star. And together, they are unstoppable. Dude, by the way, let me play this. And I'll tell you guys why. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Got that off. Again, Ethan only misses Trisha because Trisha is incredibly popular right now and her podcast is doing great. You dumb, silly fuck. First of all... Ethan, relax. He's a kid, bro. My po Listen, I'm not here to brag. My podcast is still way more popular. Obviously. Okay? Just numbers-wise, let's just fucking say it. Okay? Dummy. You're the one that called Trisha a, sa a spawn from Satan. If you want to talk about who's dick-riding Trisha because she's popular, look in the fucking mirror, you little douchebag. Okay. By whoa, whoa. He's a kid. <laughs> How old is Adam? Ethan's going so hard, which I totally understand. Like, Ethan's always getting kicked down, so he, like, gets defensive. But I will just say, like, no offense. Ethan is literally top. Ethan is literally the top. But is is he a kid? Is he a, an adult yet? Is he, like, 20? How old is he? Is he, like, a kid? I feel like if you're under... He's, like, pretty young. You know what I mean? By the way, this kid... I disengaged from this kid when he was creeping on my mom. Oh! <gasps> Uh-oh. Yeah, he's 20. He's not a child, but he's young, you know. That's right. Have I said this? <laughs> I don't think so. He's this 23. Okay, he's 22. Weirdo 23, 22. Was chatting up my mom privately, one on one, trying to become her best friend. They were chatting. I believe it. No, no, no. Adam, the reason I don't watch Adam is he's young and he's clout driven. I knew because of the way he covered Colleen. I'm not victim blaming. He can still be a victim of Colleen and still be a clout chaser. And, like, he is building a brand of clout chasing. That's why I don't watch it personally. But that doesn't mean he's, like, a bad person. He's just, like, kind of a product of the internet. That's probably what he thinks he has to do. But, yeah, I don't – he's obviously very unwise, right? He's just a parrot. He's parroting what people think matters, I think. Getting, calling, texting and shit. And then when he come into L.A., he was going to meet up with her one-on-one. -on -one, and I didn't know anything about this. And then when my mom told me, I was like, that's fucking weird yeah, as no. shit. So this little freak was trying to weasel his way into a friendship with my mom. I found that very bizarre and very mm -hmm. off-putting. And that's why I was like, I'm so out on Adam. Like, what's wrong with you, dude? Mm -hmm. And I can totally see I'm why. I'm so glad she told us about it, oh by the way, God. ahead of time. Because, like, because my mom's she's a sweet, way naive, too naive lady. She, way too who naive. knows what my mom tells him? She's so sweet and she naive. She will, like, post on Instagram, hey, I'm right here at this Ralph's at this address. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she's very naive. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it's just so... Yeah, I think Ethan probably, ha he has a right to stand up for himself, for sure. Look, expecting Ethan to be, like, calm and centered and blah, blah, blah. But, like, leave Donna alone. We love her. Protect her at all costs. Ridiculous. Um, I just found that super gross. And uh, also, I, this accusation really pissed me off. Like, it's just such bullshit. Because Trisha is incredibly popular right now, and her podcast is doing great. No. Why Ethan, the fuck do I care? Ethan is allowed to miss what was a really great entertaining show. It's sad, because I think Ethan really misses Trisha, Trisha as a friend. I think Ethan and Trisha's friendship could have been one of the best. I just, they couldn't figure out how to make it healthy. But man, the chemistry was off the charts, bro. So... Oh. Uh, so I think there's a lot of complicated emotions when it comes to that. By the way, again, she's doing great. And honestly, if you go Trisha is doing great. Like Trisha really remade her brand. Remember, okay, I know you guys like don't maybe are weren't there. Trisha has had a long relationship with the internet. Her only goal is to be famous. She said it a thousand times. She went on TV shows, Big Brother talent shows she faked talent she faked addictions she like faked things to be on tv so she'd be like i'm super like i talk fast i do this i do this like these aren't real things these are like things you make up to go on tv in my opinion and then okay like it moves forward oh my gosh stop it chat said Brittany, what happened to your knee stop i got attacked by mosquitoes this weekend 
I got it. They're all mosquito bites. And I, my skin heals really, really bad. They're all mosquito bites. <laughs> Stop. Uh, no. <laughs> they're mosquito bites. It's fine. <laughs> I got attacked. Anyways, so Trisha's doing very well. But like Trisha has always kind of required someone else's career to keep her going. And that's the problem that I, I, I don't think people have ever saw about Trisha's like branding is it's Trisha is a very specific content creator who relies heavily on networking. Okay. She's great. I like her as a person, but okay. Like, I feel like we're kind of, you know what I mean? Like she relied on like sensationalism and all these things. She, I don't know what, Trisha is a celebrity. I don't know what, Trisha's like a Kim Kardashian. They rely on the networking and the drama to be relevant. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Ethan has a show. He has a thing. He has a brand. It's different. So I'm trying to be nice about this, but you know what I'm saying? Go back. I've been cheerleading her since the minute she made her podcast. True. Mm -hmm. I was saying, She's super funny. She's a great entertainer. If you guys like Trisha, you should go watch it. Right, I remember that. I've been saying that consistently, okay? And then, you know, like, let's let's just call it, let's just say, I mean, listen, my podcast is a lot more popular, and that's just what it is, bro, okay? <sighs> so don't put that fucking shit on me, you douchebag. Talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm n I've that's never it. complained about her show doing well. I'm happy for her. I've always said that. That's it. That's it. Um, my opinion of this, I, I think it's embarrassing I think, on Ethan's behalf. I think it's embarrassing to like stalk my mom and try to become her best friend, <laughs> you little fucking freak. How about that for embarrassing? <laughs> little douche. God, I hate him. He's such an, he's, he weirded me out. Like, like genuinely, I've never had somebody try to do that before. Sam, I think Ethan's in the wrong. I think it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I think it's cringy. Mm -hmm. I think there's a double standard going. Uh uh, chat. Do not put misinformation out there. You can't heal from BPD, though. Not only can you heal from it, but it is uh, the high probability of it has gone up so much thanks to modern medicine. You can absolutely heal from BPD. I'm literally in remission. I'm literally in remission. You know, and like the statistical. I made a video about this. Okay, remission isn't healing. Um, what do you think remission means? Like, I don't know what you think healing means or what you think, you know, you're dying the moment you hit a certain age. Like the moment you're born, you kind of start dying, right? Like you're never not dying, but you can be living like healing. Okay. If you get an amputation, have you healed your leg? Like, I think you're using words very interestingly and uniquely. And I appreciate that, but. Yeah, cancer patients are never healed. Fuck them, I guess. <laughs> like, I, you do you. You know, girl, you do you. Going on here, what I think it's thing? unnecessary, and I think a lot of people have been reacting to this as and talking shit about Trisha and Moses. And I'm like, what is he reacting? Did we watch to? the same clip? Bitch, yeah. did you live the same? You were there all during Frenemies. What? What is? What clip is he reacting? Just to? me talking about Moses last. That last yeah, one. Yeah, okay. the last one. Got it. It's What's like, embarrassing? You I'm called sorry. her the spawn of Satan. You know about all the stuff about Moses and all the stuff about Trisha. But he's young. Ignore him. Don't be mad over a 20 year old kid, Ethan. Get over it. But also, like, I think Adam's just doing it for clout or something. Or, like, it just seems like a weird taste, uh, take from him. Now you're dick riding Trisha because her, her podcast is more popular. Did I mention that she, um, she's smart for ghosting you when you tried to visit her those, fo those few times? Whoops. Whoops. Times? That was smart. <clears throat> she did the right thing for sure. Yeah, how you brought it and up. And by the way, just because you're dick riding her now, or clit riding her, does that work? Well, well, Ethan. Image. Yeah. Just because you're clit riding her now, Adam, she's still going to ghost your ass. So don't, like, uh, you know what I mean? Oh, maybe I can get on the Trish, Trish podcast. Nah. She Vagina. Doesn't want to nah. She ghosted you then, she'll ghost you now. But Ethan, as always, had to end it. You won't see Trisha or Moses respond to this, but uh, I'm sure okay. Ethan will make he's another. Dick he's actually dick writing them. 
what they would never doing? respond to this. Okay. Couple of videos. Anyway, on. whatever. The point is, is I yeah. hate these little fuckers that talk shit like this who have been like, all of a sudden, uh, it's like the consistency of it all that's hard. This is a, it's a hard industry. It's hard to know, like, who can you ever be on good, on good, who are you ever really good with? You know, you don't know. You don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird bubble. They forget, they, everyone has amnesia. They forget. Did I have to go in on Adam? No. Did I want to because I'm just fucking <laughs> pissed off? Yes. So shut up, bitch. <laughs> go text more moms and try to be best friends with people's moms, weirdo. Have, are you in touch with Trisha's mom yet, I wonder? Trying to get that 5%? That would be 10%. Through the mama? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Trisha, uh, I say this uh, as a olive, a fig branch, an olive branch. Uh, ask your mom if Adam McIntyre has been messaging her, just, just to make sure. <laughs> just to be sure, that's it. He takes that 5%. That's all I'll say. Oh, here, this comment is good. Adam McIntyre self-reporting. Adam used to praise H3 and tra trash talk Trisha. Mm -hmm. Adam once said, Trisha's baby <gasps> was the spawn of Satan. But the minute... Okay, that's not funny. Don't talk about... Okay, listen. As much as debate bros try to pretend like I talk about kids, I never talk about people's kids. Never. Find me a clip where I've talked about a literal child and not the parenting. I'm always talking about parenting. Calling Trisha's child the spawn of Satan? Blocked. Block that person. You leave children out of this, bro, okay? Block. Block Adam. I would have blocked Adam if I saw that. See? I knew it. You can't call a baby the spawn of Satan. Like, okay, I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to, it's like a comment. Well, maybe, actually, wait, pause. The spawn of Satan. I guess maybe they're not calling the baby anything. They're calling Trisha Satan. Okay, wait. Recontextualize it. If he meant it in that way, that's not that bad. Right? Because if, if he's only referencing Trisha as Satan, then he's not referencing the kid. Okay, never mind. I'm not that upset with that comment. But he's allowed to think Trisha is Satan. Okay, I take that back. He wasn't really talking about the kid. Mm. I'm going to be optimistic and say he's calling Trisha Satan. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, wait. Okay, wait. No, Jasmine, make a good point. Isn't a spawn of Satan a demon? Wait, see, now I'm confused. Damn it. <gasps> okay, hold on. I'm not sure what's happening. If he's insulting the baby, not cool. If he's just insulting Trisha, fair game. Trisha's podcast became popular. Adam spontaneously yeah, started kissing happened? her ass and even asked Trisha if he could be a guest on her podcast. That oh, I did not know. I didn't know. Adam yeah. is a duplicitous wanker. Spoiler, Trisha ghosted Adam when he visited LA. Uh, Twice. Oh. Damn. So anyway, shut up, dork, bitch. Weird. Mom, you just mom, like you mom lover. Opinions with the wind. You motherfucker. Literally. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Should <sighs> I need to go on, on Adam? No. Should I have gone in on Adam? Probably not. Listen, do I buy clothes? Do I care? No, I do not fucking care. Do I buy clothes because I need them? No. Do I order fucking Burger King because I am hungry? Yep. True. Uh, damn, Adam is definitely going to make a response video when he, where he victimizes himself. Oh, Adam is about to ride this all the way to the bank. He's going to make money talking about this. Yes. Sometimes. And no. Yeah. Let's no. get Taco Bell. Let's yes. get Domino's. Pizza curse? Oh, people were saying, <laughs> let's get Domino's, you guys. <laughs> let's just... Shout out to the Domino's. I feel like this would be a, like, uh, the end of the ceremony. <laughs> like True. A, a seance. Yeah. You open it with the Domino's and you close yeah. it with the Domino's. We close the book. Lens the room. Lena, let's get Domino's. With the Domino's smell. Is she here? For real? I'm here. Absolutely. We're closing the one thousand. We're, we're closing the real. seance. Okay, let's do it. Uh. We are shutting the uh, the portal. Order the family special. The sp the the connection between worlds is being severed, and the the souls of Moses <laughs> annoying us and our families is closed. Damn, I'm bro. Officially filing for divorce with my brother. <gasps> Submitted in the papers. It's become your family's heart and soul. <laughs> so that's it. It's done. Don't ask me. Is Frenemies coming back? Fuck no. Fuck no. That's right. Um, and that's all I have to say the about Venera. that. Anyway. It's kind of enjoying watching him. I kind of want to finish that clip. 
Which one? Of Adam crying. Oh, okay. Such a baby. It's always, it's still, it shocks me the, the longer he goes. So he just tweeted it's that when she had a baby? Yeah, dude, he he was like super That's fucked. so He nasty. was like a mega Trisha hater. Yeah, and, and like even that is super nasty. Yeah. Like, it's like that's a that's a newborn baby. Yeah, you gonna call that baby little Nikki? <laughs> Can we see that tweet? I kind of want to <laughs> see it because it's like unbelievable. <clears throat> I remember he he said all kinds of mean stuff about them. That I was a part. Yeah, so they took it as him commenting on the baby as well. Yeah, don't comment on the baby. You know, of something that would call Trisha out for doing what Ethan's doing. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. And for a yeah, yeah, couple on, videos on. on it, like it's ah, as always had to end it. What do you mean, as always? Ethan didn't burn the bridge with Trisha. Trisha burned the bridge with Ethan. What do you mean, as always, had to end it? What does that mean? You won't see Trisha or Moses respond to this. They're such because they're literally avoiding accountability. Because they're literally avoiding accountability. Literally. That's why they're doing it. Which is like, fine, you can play that game, but that's why. Good but I'm people. sure Ethan will make another couple videos on it. Like, it's, it's frustrating... That I was a part of something that would call Trisha out for doing what Ethan's doing now, and for people to expect me not to call. What is it I'm Wait, doing what? now? Exactly. What are you even talking? Yeah, about? Yeah, what are you even talking about, bro? <gasps> Ethan out for doing the same thing. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't care if I get backlash. I want to be as fair as possible. Okay. And this well. is how I feel. I am being. Very good. You're very enlightened, and we're all very proud of you, Adam. Well done. Thank you. Don't talk to my mom ever again. <laughs> you hear me, kid? Yo, I don't know what it is with this bubble and moms, bro. Mm. <laughs> Fuck, baby, no. I was I never <laughs> even wanted to talk about that because I thought it was so weird, but yeah. this kid was starting shit, so I had to talk about it. <laughs> I forgot I frankly I forgot about it. I'm yeah. being dead serious. This kid was harassed was like trying to buddy up with my mom. She goes, my mom one day goes, Oh, I'm Adam's coming to town. I'm gonna go get lunch with him. I yeah, said, and we were like sorry. What Adam? <laughs> I said, please don't. Mm -mm. Big Bye, Adam. Adam. Also, guys, I think we're done with this conversation. Okay, shout out to Ethan and Ela and the whole conundrum. What a beautiful moment. Also, guys, look. <laughs> we can't be out here calling neurodivergent people lazy. It's just like contrary to the way we're moving forward in the world. But I will say this, whether Moses is autistic or not, because I know a lot of people are like, Brittany, he's autistic. Whether he's autistic or not, it's not an excuse to be an asshole. Okay, autistic people, listen, autism doesn't make you an asshole. It makes neurotypical people think you're being an asshole, but sometimes you're just also an asshole. Okay, that's the difference. Neurotypical people read autistic people as assholes, but sometimes you're just an asshole and you happen to be autistic. There is a difference. Okay, so Moses is just an asshole. And we've all got one in our families and it is what it is. And sometimes we are the asshole. It is what it is. Okay. It's okay. I think Moses can come up from this. I think he could be a great person one day. I think everything could be great one day, but he has to face himself. And whether or not he does that, I don't know, girl. The point is, okay, Trisha made a decision. It is her decision to make. Moses is making a decision. It's his decision to make. Ethan is making his and Ela's making hers. We are all making our own decisions. And way we make decisions in healthy mindsets. But of course, nobody's perfect. Ethan and Ela are not perfect. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I certainly will never be perfect. I will be an asshole at some point in my life. I just hope the moment lasts a moment. Two seconds. Maybe minutes. Maybe a day. Hopefully not a lifetime. And it sounds like Moses has been an asshole for a lifetime. Okay? All right. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, da, da.